welcome to this month's episode of Updating Ancient Archer, the uh, game engine. So, I just closed a pull request. You're just in time. Welcome. All right, so let's go over what has changed since the last month. And by the way, hi, I'm Matt. If you like code stuff, consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. I've been working on this a ton, as you can see. Uh, this is the April 19th release, and uh, I don't know if the binary is going to be available today, but I'll try to make that available as soon as I can so people can try it out if they want. Okay, well, let's look at this lines of code change. That's kind of important, right? So it looks like I worked with about, uh, I guess that would be about seven 7,000 lines of code, including the add and remove together. That's interesting. Okay, well, that's uh, a decent amount, I guess. So here's basically everything that got added in this latest version of the uh, game engine. We'll show it off shortly. I'll try to leave timestamps. Um, yeah, all this stuff. I guess I just read it out loud like one of those guys that reads boring slides to you. All right, we fixed... Well, this is going to get a little nerdy. We'll just, we'll just say that. Cache animated models. Uh, yes, this is for part of the loader system. We basically just don't want to reload the same models twice. So if something's already been loaded, it'll just reuse what it already uploaded to the graphics card if it's the same thing. Um, that's a pretty nice little improvement, of course. Uh, I added a bunch of new lighting formulas. This, actually this big focus was all on lighting. I spent most of the time messing with lighting. And uh, yeah, there's Blenfong, Fong, and Galrond, and they're they basically just auto use and switch between them as needed. And I added some lighting tests, we'll show those here shortly. Um, I prepped for shadows. Um, I didn't quite get shadows done, I was trying to. I actually have a demo of it working, but there's a lot of configuring to do with shadows, and I still gotta add them to all the lights. But uh, it's on the way. I just need more time. All right, we changed the way you access the props. You can now get, uh, well, it's kind of, it's a, it doesn't even, it's not even gonna make sense if you, unless you see the code, but basically you can get access to the actual objects and use their public functions, which is gonna make it a little easier once we go to a entity component system, I believe. So I just need to be making a lot of those refactoring changes as I go basically uh, for how the stuff is accessed. That way, if you want to make a big editor with this whole thing, you can. All right, debug point light indicator. Yeah, that was just adding some of those in. Uh, still working on the other ones. The directional light one needs to be a proper arrow. It didn't render right, and I kind of moved on. So the other ones are in progress. But uh, anyway, gamma, yeah. There's a gamma switch you can use on just like your hardware video card, and I added the toggle for that. It's real ugly. I don't know who would ever use it unless your game's way too dark or something, but it's, uh, might as well have it there. I need to add shaders for this later when it becomes important again, but, uh, I got other stuff to do before that. Uh, I changed a lot of things. The skybox had some major changes, mostly in how it works. It's now, like, part of the camera, basically, or a viewport. So you just attach a skybox to that, basically. Um, oh yeah, I fixed all the flying stuff and the tests. That was just movement, basically. Movement controls. Uh, render pipeline rewritten. This was kind of a big deal. I really reanalyzed how I was doing all my rendering and uh, kind of set up a pipeline um, for OpenGL. Uh, that's his, what, I, what did I spell here? Pipple line? <laughs> oh well, I didn't notice that. Don't know. Interface now, get it. Okay, yeah, we already talked about some of these actually. Um, remove a lot of old code, sure. Okay. Uh, a lot of bug fixes. Pretty big focus on bug fixing, too. There was a whole lot of issues with uh, some memory leaks and uh, things not reusing memory when they should and some of the ways things shut down. Um, that was the big stuff. Oh, the stenciling bug was fixed where it was uh, not in front of everything like it was supposed to be. So we got that sorted out with the new render pipeline and uh, some view pause things that were causing some light bugs. And we fixed another light bug that there was. It was a normal calculation that I was doing awkward and it made everything darker than it should be but yeah a lot of commits a lot of working on this pretty much did like four to six pomodoros most days of working on this so uh, i put in about four to six hours a day on this and uh yeah looking back at it to me honestly <laughs> this is just a retrospective a little bit it feels like i actually didn't do much but i actually made like some pretty big leaps in my understanding of the render pipeline so that's really good i mean it's not that complicated but if you don't have it like exactly understood, you're gonna have weird bugs that aren't gonna make sense to you until you do understand it. So I did get a lot of that sorted out um, and that was really good. And so it's gonna make the shadows a lot easier because I actually understand how they work now. And uh, I was looking at some of the more advanced stuff like PBR and reflections and, and stuff like that. 
and uh, yeah, it makes it sound a lot easier. So I don't uh, foresee a whole lot of issues getting the shadows working. Uh, all right, let's look at some demos. And we're to the code and also to the test explorer. I know it's really tiny. It's kind of intended. There's it's not like you're going to follow through and walk through this code. You know, there's a there's a ton of crap going on. There's a whole lot of files. These all expand out. There's uh, anyway. So let's just go to the tests. So I've written up some tests. Let me see if I can zoom these in. Nope. But uh, generally what I do is just walk through all these and add to them as necessary. So I'm just going to hit the walkthrough button and they actually didn't really go in the order that I wanted them to, but uh, we should be able to test out most of the features of the engine by running these tests. There's only a few features that aren't properly tested, but I'll get to those at some point. All right, here we go. We got the default init window too. All right, and then we hit OK and it loads up some lighting tests. It's loading right now. There it goes. It's okay. So it just loaded up all these models, this animation, put in all these lights, did a bunch of stuff. And uh, here we are. So what we have here is a three light system. There's a flashlight attached to my camera. There's a little uh, point light down there and then there's a sunlight. So if I turn the sunlight all the way down, I have it set to minimize at 0 0.003. So, so there's always a tiny bit of sunlight. But we can see the point light more clearly and we can draw this little debug thing. Uh, moving around a bit. Um, this is just basically to make sure that it lights up as intended. Anyway, I don't know how hard it is to see on the old YouTube, so let's brighten it up a bunch and turn its ambient down maybe. There we go. Now it's pretty clear where the point light is or it should be. So yeah, just getting to test all of this out in a nice scene when you're working with lights. You can really tell if it's working or not. I did have some weird bugs with it cascading the wrong way and stuff, and I got all those sorted out, so that felt nice to uh, get this light. So I'm going to darken this light all the way. It should be like completely dark, except for... Well, let's turn off that debug cube. Uh, this guy, he has an emission texture on his hand and it just shows up because it's emission. It's just using standard glow. Uh, let's turn up our flashlight. Let's make it really bright. So then we, with this kind of setup, you can walk around in like a, a darker scene and you know, a little cave dark environment. So the spotlight seems to work pretty good as well. And this will be using basically blend fong on all these guys that actually have specular textures. And the floor doesn't, but it still does the shading pretty nicely. Just doesn't do anything with the specular, um, which you can kind of see if you adjust. All right, so I'm gonna turn that way down and turn the sunlight back up. Whoa, okay, there we go, sunlight. So that's basically just the sunlight and just the directional light. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. I fixed some weird calculations that made it look a lot better. Uh, we can spin it around a little bit, you know, mess with it. As you can see, there's no shadows. Now I might show you the shadows here at the end of this. Uh, they are somewhat done for directional lights, but what you might not realize about this scene is this scene is flipping huge. Uh, like going from this guy to this guy is like 200 units. So uh, like most of the tutorials and stuff, they have shadows calculated for very small little things, uh, not for kind of giant 200 unit away things and 300 unit tall things. Uh, most of the tutorials don't really talk about that. So I need to adjust a lot of stuff and figure out, play with a lot of numbers to get those shadows right. But anyway, lights are looking pretty fresh, I think anyway, I'm pretty happy with them. It just, it just works so much better. And if you don't want to mess with any of the directional stuff, you can just have full ambient, you know? You can just be like, I just want the light of the room. Ambient's great. It also it doesn't cast shadows, if that's the thing, too. But uh, there's no shadows here yet. Anyway, I guess I'm making that confusing. All right, so there's that test. I've been working on mostly this test. This is where I've spent the majority of my time. Um, oh, yeah, I should show you the gamma correction thing. If you toggle that on with OpenGL, it looks like this. Uh, pretty awful, but the thing is, uh, when it's completely dark, Maybe you're playing a game and it's like this, and you're like, okay, game, um, what am I supposed to do? I can't even see. You know how games do that to you sometimes? It's very annoying. You can at least hit this and uh, be able to see. So figured I'd at least put it in there. That way, if someone's making a game with this engine, they can throw it in their options or whatever they want to do. That's up to them. All right, well, that's pretty much the lighting tests and how the lighting works currently. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Of course, I didn't really show it, but you can add a lot more spotlights and a lot more uh, point lights. So you can add them all over the scene if you want. I just had one. All right, this is just a this model test. I don't think there's anything really. Yeah, just a little spinning cube. So some of these become a little redundant. This is a reuse resources. So there's supposed to be two guys and they use the same resources, which this will crash if it doesn't. So it seems to be working okay. Same with the cubes. Let's uh, go to the next one. All right, this is just a base animated guy, which is kind of a redundant test. All right, here's some skybox switching stuff, switching it on the main cam. And uh, toggle full screen, it goes black for a second on OBS, but there it goes. So, yeah, 
Skybox system. It's pretty standard. It's not HDR yet, but uh, maybe on next update, so stay tuned. All right, some uh, sound effects, just some basic sound effects. I'm going to click these. It's going to be kind of loud, so loud warning. But as you can see, they all work. You can click them at will. Oh, let me turn the sound down a bunch and click them a bunch. Basically, you should be able to click these at will and just not have anything have a problem. Because they're all loaded up and ready. Because in general, if you're making some sort of simulation, you want to do this. Uh, I also have support for background music, but I don't have a test for that. And I know it's a little glitchy because I got to work out a few things with that. But it does work. It's just not perfect. The sound effects are... The sound is something I need to revisit for sure, but it does work for now. All right, and this is just kind of a mashup scene. We got a stenciled cube here. We got a stenciled animating model here. Uh, this is, you know, just a click effect or something, you know, if you uh, play a game and you want to highlight the units you have selected kind of deal. It's generally what the stenciling's for. It's customizable. Um, I don't know if there's anything else really to show with the scene. Just mashing up a few things and making sure it all worked. Got our little fly controls. Yeah, all right, let's go to the next one. And we're on stencil outline. Okay, yeah, this was a big test. I made some, uh, some cubes. I stenciled some models. And basically, you're supposed to be able to see the stenciling combine with all the selected models. And this was just a yeah, test to help eliminate bugs. And if uh, there's a model that's not stenciled, like this here gray cube, you should be able to see stenciled stuff through it, like so. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell on the cube, but yeah, all the stencils you can see are see-through. That way you can see them in your scene. Maybe they're a quest indicator or whatever it might be for your game. Uh, stenciling, stenciling should be able to handle that. <laughs> God, words. Um, I don't know if there's anything else to show on the scene. Just a little test. And some window option stuff. Yeah, I sorted out a lot of the window creation stuff and uh, added some min and max heights that can actually be custom set. Um, this is the min it allows you to go. And yeah, everything should work pretty well. The default callback should handle all the base stuff. Uh, yeah, that's the test. That's the demos. This is pretty much how this version looks. Um, and yeah, let me know if you want the binary. I'm going to try to make it available somewhere. This code is uh, private. I would link it. I can link the old version. But yeah, I kind of have this paywall behind my Patreon and supporter thing at this point. So if you want to go the extra mile, I will give you access to all this. Uh, but uh, for everyone, I will at least make the binary available as soon as as I can. I guess I, I don't know where to upload it. Where should I upload it? How do you do that? I don't know. I haven't really gotten into the full release pipeline stuff, but I'll have to take time to figure that out too. Unless someone wants to be a big help. Oh, special bonus. You stuck around this long. I'm going to show you the shadows and kind of how they work. I'll try to be quick about it, but I think we'll just go to uh, this directional shadows branch. Okay, now if we get in nice and tight here, we should be able to see a little shadow right here on this cube. Now, this cube isn't perfectly on the floor, and the shadow isn't exactly perfect, but it's not too bad, and it's a start. And this, of course, is uh, all debug. Uh, this isn't in any version yet, but this is kind of where I'm at. Let's see. Let's try changing the direction. Yeah, we can move the cube with this one. So you can kind of see, let me go up a little bit, change the sun direction. Yeah, depending on where the cube is, I have some area messed up. It's like, it doesn't affect enough the scene, and I need to figure out how to fix all of that. Ah, uh, so that's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, yeah. But I did kind of figure out that if you turn up these planes eh, a lot, you can get some interesting effects, and I'm still trying to figure out the magic of how these work exactly. But it seems like in order to get any sort of shadows on those big guys, I need to turn a lot of this stuff way up with some what I'm still uh, toying with here and trying to find out. So let's just try this with these new numbers and just see if we get any different results. Because I, I guess I'm going to have to put this kind of control on to the light and the shadows, uh, but I got to figure out the best way to do that. So there's a lot of thought that needs to go into this and a lot of testing because uh, and a lot of reading. I, I have a lot to learn about shadows. So there's just so many different angles to go down when you're building a game engine that it's a lot of solo work. It's definitely a lot of solo work. Now, I can't even see the shadow on this thing at all. But what about on these guys? Let's check them. We see shadows on them? No, not really. Let's just move this light around, see if we get shadows at all. So I might have something configured really wrong there. I don't know. But I'm ultimately just scaling up these numbers. I think I had this at a thousand once, and I thought I saw some decent results. So let's just, let's just have a look at what happens like that. Now, I don't know what you would call decent results exactly, but basically I'm trying to figure out a point where 
actually these big figures actually cast a shadow it, it's a lot of work I, I shouldn't try to go into detail I'm just going to confuse people there are much better sources to learn shadows than me showing you my uh, initial buggy implementation there we go but this is where we're at with it this is where I'm at with it all right so now here you can see some shadows this guy's got a little shadow there this guy's got a little shadow there uh, this guy has no shadow I don't know why all right so let's just turn up these lights a little bit and see what happens let's move the light around and see what happens ah this animating guy however is casting his t-pose shadow so it's not getting uh the animation so i gotta fix that as well i think i know how to do that though but as you can see with these large numbers and these large figures we definitely get some uh, bigger shadows that we can work with and you can see how they're programmed there um and, but now you can't see it on these little objects so interesting so there's some things to toy with there to get these shadows right now ultimately i could just i don't know i guess i'm gonna have to to configure a few things but they do work and they do work half decently for what they are uh, to some extent so it's better than nothing it's better than no shadows at all in my opinion because shadows just brings a lot of depth to an engine or, or anything but uh it's definitely not going to be passable because uh, look at that separation that's really awkward that shouldn't be happening so we'll just have to adjust a lot of things and uh all right well that's that's pretty much where that's at but uh that's going to be the next phase so in a month from today i will post another update on the engine and hopefully another binary release and and yeah, we'll see. Just going to move it along as much as I can and keep releasing one a month. So I uh, hope you guys are staying tuned and interested and staying healthy, most importantly, and all that. Because, uh, yeah, you guys have made this channel what it is, and I really appreciate you. And that's that's all I want to say, I guess, really. All right. Well, let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. And until then, until next time, peace out.